Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today we'll be diving into the entire movie franchise of The Expendables. This contains The Expendables 1, The Expendables 2, The Expendables 3, and lastly The Expendables 4. Enjoy the recap. The film unfolds with a formidable squad known as The Expendables, swooping into action off the coast of Somalia, in the Gulf of Aden. Their mission, to foil the plans of local pirates holding hostages captive for three months. The Power Pack team is led by Barney Ross, an ex-SAS trooper, alongside Blade Maestro Lee Christmas, martial arts wizard Yin Yang, ace sniper Gunnar Jensen, and Hale Caesar. As the pirate chief gears up to end a hostage's life, his body becomes a canvas for multiple red laser dots. His henchmen, rifles at the ready, react to the sudden threat. Barney, playing the negotiator, throws a bag containing $3 million onto the ground, urging the pirate to free the hostages. But the pirate chief, consumed by greed, demands an additional $2 million. Despite Barney's insistence, the pirate refuses to budge. This irks Gunner whose temper snaps. Barney attempts to calm him, but Gunner pulls the trigger, dispatching the pirate chief and setting off a chaotic shootout. In the frenzy, the Expendables launch smoke grenades, plunge the surroundings into darkness, and don their night vision goggles. They descend via ropes, eager to free the hostages, but are stalled as a pirate fires up a generator. In spite of their clear advantage, Barney offers the pirates a final chance. Their stubborn refusal earns them a lethal response. Barney eliminates them all with his gunfire. Just as the team is about to free the hostages, Gunner, plagued by twisted thoughts, threatens to hang a pirate. Barney attempts to reason with him, but to no avail. In a twist of events, Young confronts Gunner physically, but Barney steps in, forcing Gunner at gunpoint to release Young. Gunner's unsettling behavior and psychological instability lead to a difficult decision for Barney. He has no choice but to dismiss Gunner from the team. As darkness falls, Lee finds himself confronting the bitter truth that his partner, Lacey, has moved on. In the meantime, Barney connects with Tool, the jack-of-all-trades of the Expendables, serving as the recruitment liaison and weapons dealer. As Tool is giving Barney's back tattoo a final touch, Lee joins them. A playful challenge leads to a dart game which Lee surprisingly loses. For a man who has never tasted defeat at the game, it's a concerning sign. On another front, on Valena Island, a truck packed with soldiers arrives at a palace bringing along accused traitors from the town. General Garza faces them down a tunnel, accusing them of theft. Despite the pleas and protestations of their innocence, Garza remains unconvinced. Suddenly a trigger is pulled, and one of the accused falls, killed by a man dressed in an immaculate suit, James Munro. Munro prompts Garza to execute the rest to command respect from his men. With visible reluctance, Garza complies. Meanwhile, Barney connects with a mysterious client known only as Mr. Church, and crosses paths with an old acquaintance and rival mercenary, Trench. Church pitches a mission to topple the ruthless dictator General Garza ruling over the island of Valena in the Gulf of Mexico. Trench, preoccupied with his own affairs, nudges the job towards Barney. Sensing that others have declined the high-risk mission, Barney pushes for a $5 million price tag, demanding half upfront and the rest deposited in an offshore account. Church agrees but threatens Barney with dire consequences if the job is botched. Back at their hideout, Barney begins to study Valena with his map. Gunner then interrupts, pleading to stay on the team and swearing his competence, but Barney holds firm, citing Gunner's drug habits. Agitated, Gunner walks away with a threat which Barney just shrugs off. That night Barney briefs his team about their Valena mission, and soon they land on the island's beautiful coast. Barney and Lee secure their massive plane at the port, bluffing to the guards about being wildlife researchers transporting injured animals with their fake passports. Turns out Gunner managed to sneak his way on board the craft and leaves without anyone knowing. Barney and Lee lay low as the army rolls in, but secretly, Lee films the brutal crackdown on the locals by the army. At the local hangout, they rendezvous with Church's contact, Sandra. As she drives them around, Sandra talks about Valena's past beauty before Garza's corrupt reign and a mysterious American turned it into a nightmare. Despite her parents' death and the ensuing chaos, she holds on to hope for a better future. Curious, Barney requests Sandra to drive closer to the palace for a better view, and she hesitatingly agrees. Stepping out near the palace, Lee hops off the truck, eager to soak in the sights from a unique perspective. Not far behind, Sandra and Barney pull up, adding to the ensemble. In the midst of this grandeur, Barney grows suspicious, confronting Sandra about her potential to be setting them up. Sandra denies it, making it clear that her sole mission is to help the suffering people of Valena. Barney warns her that Valena is a lost cause, and unexpectedly, an interruption comes in the form of a truck full of General Garza's soldiers. One of the brutish soldiers grabs Sandra, reminding her that even a general's daughter can face the gun's barrel for breaking the rules. He hauls Sandra towards their vehicle, a move that's met with swift retaliation. Lee, the unassuming hero, steps in. 
The distraction provided by his intervention allows Barney to take down his adversaries. Then the spotlight swings to Lee, who showcases his combat skills, sending one enemy after another to bite the dust. The man holding Sandra becomes Lee's next target as Barney neutralizes the last enemy soldier with his bullets just whizzing past Lee's head, who gives him a tell-off. Without wasting a moment they hit the road, speeding off just as Munro and his henchmen get wind of the chaotic scene that unfolded at the palace. Within a blink they're at the port, and Barney starts doling out orders. He tells Lee to whisk Sandra onto the plane and lay low while he tackles Munro and his goons. Lee obliges, opening the plane door for Sandra, but she stands her ground, refusing to board. Insisting that her place is in Valena, she chooses to stay. With no room for negotiation, Lee relents, letting her go and starting up the aircraft. As Garza's guards aim their guns at the plane, Barney makes a timely entrance, beating them to the draw. Meanwhile, Sandra finds refuge in her truck as Munro charges past her, fixated on halting Barney's escape. With clockwork precision, Lee steers the plane away from the port. Barney, in a race against time, sprints towards the fleeing aircraft. He takes a leap off the port, gripping onto the plane just as a hailstorm of bullets from Munro's men comes his way. Despite the onslaught, Barney hauls himself into the plane. He's met with the news from Lee Sandra has chosen to stay behind in Valena. This isn't part of their plan, but Barney takes it in stride. He takes the control, steering the plane back towards the port as Lee gears up. The moment the port comes into view, Lee launches his counterattack, showering Munro and his men with a barrage of bullets from the plane. Barney follows up, dousing them with what seems to be gasoline. Before the goons can put two and two together, Lee pulls the trigger, igniting a massive explosion. Munro and his closest henchmen narrowly escape the fiery death, diving into the water. The rest aren't so lucky, becoming casualties of the cataclysmic blast. As darkness descends on the palace, a confrontation brews between Munro and Garza, the bone of contention. Sandra, Garza's daughter, who aided Barney and Lee. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the twosome successfully breached security, wiped out 41 soldiers and escaped scot-free. Munro doesn't hold back, threatening that even Garza's daughter won't get a free pass if she crosses him again. As Garza exits Munro's office, a new ally makes an entrance. A deal is struck between Munro and Gunner for the hefty sum of $100,000 that very night. Meanwhile, Barney uncovers that their employer, Church, is a front for the CIA. They've been roped in to take down an ex-CIA operative, none other than Munro himself. It turns out Munro's avarice led him to partner with Garza, hogging the drug operations all to themselves. Munro secures Garza's reign by instilling fear among the townsfolk. Unraveling these threads, Barney lays out the discoveries before Lee and Yang. The trio find themselves in agreement, deciding to call off the deal they were roped into. Later that night Barney seeks out Tool, wrestling with his thoughts. Sandra's bravery and unwavering dedication to Valena keep replaying in his mind, leaving him unsettled. Instead of doling out a straightforward answer, Tool takes Barney down memory lane, recounting a haunting incident from the Bosnian War. He reveals his guilt about not preventing a woman's death, an event that left permanent scars on his soul. His story suggests that women can go to great lengths, sacrificing everything even their lives to safeguard those they hold dear. Simultaneously, Sandra is taken captive by Munro's henchmen. Munro grills her about the purpose of the American's visit to the island, but Garza steps in, ready to berate Sandra, but she fires back, asserting he might as well kill her, considering he's almost eradicated everyone on the island. Not missing a beat, Munro's men step in, resorting to waterboarding to make Sandra spill the beans about the American's objective on the island. When their efforts yield no fruit, they switch gears, keeping Sandra as a hostage instead. The following day, Barney makes a resolute decision he's going back to Valena to rescue Sandra. This decision, however, doesn't sit well with Lee, sparking a heated argument. Meanwhile, Yang, with a fire in his eyes, insists on accompanying Barney despite his objections. On the journey, Yang speaks his mind. He feels overworked and underpaid. His smaller stature, he says, makes fighting taller, bigger guys a grueling task, often leaving him with serious injuries. Their journey takes an unexpected turn when they're ambushed by Gunner and a squad of Munro's men at a traffic stop. Thankfully, they're in a bulletproof car, and the ambush swiftly spirals into a high-stakes car chase. Barney handles the wheel, weaving through the chaos while Yang steps out, exchanging gunfire with Gunner. The adrenaline-fueled chase culminates in an abandoned warehouse, setting the stage for round two of Yang vs. Gunner. Yang cleverly leverages the low-ceiling warehouse, using it to land attacks on Gunner, who keeps banging his head. But Yang's momentum eventually slows down, and Gunner seizes the opportunity to strike back. He lifts Yang up, but Barney intervenes just in time, shooting Gunner. The bullet lands just above his heart, leaving him severely wounded. As Gunner gasps for breath, Barney relentlessly probes him about who sent him. 
Gunner musters the strength to whisper a response into Barney's ear. Following the tense showdown, Barney and Yang return to the plane, greeted by the rest of the Expendables, Lee included. They may not agree with Barney's decision, but their bond runs deep, and he's still their comrade. That same day, the team takes off for Valena, soaring high in their massive plane. En route, Barney confides in Lee. Gunner before his fall had provided critical intel the blueprint of Garza's palace. With this knowledge, the team descends on Valena, quickly mobilizing to strike at the palace. Meanwhile, Garza boldly breaks ties with Munro. He accuses Munro of hiring the Expendables because he couldn't control Garza. When that failed, he resorted to using and torturing Sandra. An enraged Garza issues an ultimatum return his daughter or face death. As this tense exchange plays out, the Expendables breach Garza's palace. Lee, Yang, Caesar and Toll systematically plant explosives throughout the complex, targeting the drug storage among other places. Meanwhile, Sandra fights bravely against two of Munro's men with her hands tied, but she refuses to go down without a fight. Just in the nick of time, Barney bursts in taking down the men with Gunner's blade. After releasing Sandra from her constraints, he calms her before making an exit from her cell. But their escape doesn't go as planned, they are cornered by more of Munro's men, including his top henchmen. In the ensuing chaos, Sandra is whisked away, and Barney is left at the mercy of a soldier who chokes him. Munro's main man joins in, beating Barney mercilessly while demanding the number of men he has around the palace. Barney, however, doesn't say a word. Just when things look dire, the other Expendables storm in, launching a rescue mission for their leader. Yang and Lee work in tandem to take down one of Munro's main men. Barney grapples with his torturer, and we see some incredible skills and weapons usage to take down their assailants. At this moment, the enemy glimpses Caesar making short work of Munro's men with his impressive arsenal. Fear overtakes him, and he retreats. Upon opening the palace's main gate, the Expendables find themselves facing a horde of Garza's soldiers. They promptly retreat, and Garza seizes this moment to demand their surrender, knowing they're cornered and outgunned. In an inspiring speech to his soldiers and the townspeople, Garza apologizes for his blindness and greed. He pledges to rid Valena of the American menace, but his speech is abruptly cut short by Munro shooting him down and swiftly making his exit with Sandra and his henchmen, heading towards a getaway helicopter. Garza's fall triggers a barrage of gunfire from his soldiers towards the Expendables. As the bullets fly, Barney's comrades urge him to blow up the building, but he refuses until he knows Sandra is safe. The moment Lee confirms Sandra's exit, Barney triggers the explosives, leveling the palace and disrupting the onslaught. Emerging victorious from the ruins, the Expendables launch an offensive on the remaining soldiers in the compound, overpowering them with their formidable skills and arsenal. Barney, undeterred, races after Munro and his right-hand man for a final showdown. Toll and Lee jump into the fray, engulfing the main man in flames and effectively taking him down. Barney and Caesar, in an impressive show of firepower, obliterate the helicopter that was meant to be Munro's escape route. Cornered, Munro resorts to holding Sandra as a shield, trying to draw parallels between himself and Barney, portraying them both as mercenaries, dead inside. He can't comprehend Barney's motivations for pursuing him. Barney retorts that it was never about Munro, but about saving Sandra. Without further ado, Barney draws his gun and fires at Munro, landing shot after shot. The final blow comes from Lee, who thrusts a blade into Munro, sealing his fate. As dawn breaks, Barney hands over the mission's payment to Sandra, entrusting her with the task of restoring Valena's former glory. After their heartfelt goodbyes, Barney and the Expendables celebrate their hard-won victory at Tool's Lounge. The team's celebration is made more wholesome with the return of a recovering and repentant gunner who's still alive and has decided to seek therapy. The movie wraps up with Lee reciting a heartfelt poem in honor of Tool, then impressively landing a knife throw dead center on the board. Time skips forward, taking us to the distant land of Nepal. In a grim scenario, we see a man tied to a chair, his face concealed by a bag. Suddenly, the quiet cityscape is disturbed by the thunderous entry of four military-style tanks. The Expendables are back in action, featuring the whole crew from team leader Barney to the reformed gunner. They charge towards the enemy stronghold with a ruthless force, their vehicles thrown into reverse gear, taking out every adversary that stands in their path. It's an adrenaline-fueled rampage as each team member mows down their foes. Rocket launchers are put to good use, blasting their way through the enemy militia's defenses as the Expendables storm their stronghold. Inside, we catch a glimpse of Lee's creativity in combat as he wields two ordinary frying pans to skillfully defeat his attackers. The mission is a success as they manage to rescue the captured Dr. Joe from the clutches of the terrorist group. An unexpected find during the operation is Trench, who had been taken hostage during his own rescue mission for Dr. Joe. Armed with Caesar's gun, Trench joins the crew as they race toward the rooftop. Here, they overpower their attackers and use a zip line to escape into the forest. However, on touchdown, Barney and Lee find themselves surrounded. 
Barney mimics a gun with his hand, signaling a surprise attack that wipes out their encircling foes. This ingenious maneuver turns out to be the work of a new sniper, Billy who's joined the Expendables. Their escape continues on water as they hop onto boats, pursued relentlessly by their enemies. Undeterred, Billy manages to keep them at bay. Their getaway plane makes a timely appearance, landing in the water. After scrambling aboard, they're confronted with an army of assassins pointing their guns at them. Barney takes aim, his first shot missing, but the following three are so precise that they eliminate all threats. With that, they successfully pull away from the chaos, escaping yet another high-stakes confrontation. The team successfully escapes Nepal, and Yang leaves the group to escort Dr. Joe back to his homeland of China. Once back in New Orleans, Billy confesses to Barney that he is considering retiring at the end of the month to live with his partner Sophia. Later Barney is found by CIA operative Mr. Church. Church, still bitter about the destruction of his operation in Valena at the hands of the Expendables, believes the team owes him a favor. He presents Barney with an ultimatum. Either square off the favor or face either imprisonment or death. With no choice, Barney agrees to Church's task retrieving an item from a crashed airplane in Albania. He also insists on the inclusion of a technical expert named Maggie Chan in Barney's team. Barney meets with Maggie and says her involvement is a mistake. The next day finds them landing in the unfamiliar terrains of Albania. The Expendables navigate through the dense Albanian forests and soon locate the wreckage of the downed airplane. As they explore the interior of the plane, they accidentally trigger a bomb, leaving them with just 60 seconds. Amid the rising panic, Maggie displays her technical prowess by successfully disarming the bomb, and they retrieve the item. Satisfied with their work, they begin to make their way out of the crash site. Their moment of triumph, however, is short-lived as they find themselves ambushed by a terrorist group known as the Sangs, led by arms dealer Jean Villain. In a chilling turn of events, Villain captures Billy and demands the item they had retrieved in exchange for Billy's life. Barney, faced with the grim reality of the situation, orders his team to drop their weapons and attempts to turn over the item to Villain. But Villain isn't satisfied with just the item. He seeks to teach the Expendables respect and forces them to put their faces to the ground. A helicopter then approaches, but even as Barney complies with his demands, Villain does a roundhouse kick putting a knife through Billy. As the helicopter carrying Villain takes off, Barney rushes to Billy. His last words, barely a whisper, are a plea to Barney to retrieve a note from his pocket. A heavy gloom hangs in the air as Barney walks over to Maggie. He forces her to reveal the true nature of the retrieved item. She admits it is a computer that details the location of five tons of refined plutonium abandoned in a mine by the Soviet Union after the end of the Cold War. The Expendables huddle around to honor their fallen teammate, creating a makeshift grave amidst the Albanian wilderness. Barney pulls out the note from Billy's pocket, a letter written for his loved one, Sophia. As he reads it out loud, the raw emotion in Billy's words hits home. He speaks of the camaraderie among the Expendables, of their unwavering loyalty to each other, their strength and unity. A promise is then made, a vow that Villain will taste death. While en route to the abandoned mine via coordinates from a tracking device that Maggie had ingeniously planted, they receive an incoming call from Church. Barney, fueled by vengeance, ruselessly brushes him off. The mission for him is no longer a job but a personal vendetta, and he ends the call. Maggie surmises that Villain's sinister plot involves procuring the plutonium, not for any ideological cause but to auction it off to the highest bidder among the world's most nefarious characters. Their pursuit of justice takes the Expendables to Bulgaria as they track the faint signal emanating from the stolen computer. Inside the mine, a heartbreaking sight awaits them. Scores of captives, enslaved and forced to labor relentlessly in search of the highly dangerous plutonium. Villain, ruthless as ever, instructs his right-hand man to accelerate the operation. He has potential buyers champing at the bit and expects the radioactive product to be ready within three days. Arriving in Bulgaria, Barney and Lee perform reconnaissance in a local bar, where they unexpectedly run into a member of the Sangs. Using force to persuade him, they manage to extract crucial information regarding the precise location of the mine. After some exploration, they discover an abandoned Russian military base, where Barney decides they should set up camp for the night. The following morning, as the Expendables are huddled together, meticulously planning their strategy, Caesar suddenly motions for them to duck. They come under intense enemy fire from all directions, bullets ricocheting off every inch of the dilapidated building they're holed up in. Barney manages to get outside, and with his characteristic nonchalance, takes out a few of their assailants. Lee, meanwhile, is tasked with bringing a vehicle to their location, but Barney spots a looming tank and changes plans on the fly. 
the tank unleashes havoc, firing indiscriminately, and the Expendables soon find themselves running dangerously low on ammunition. Just as it appears they are about to be overrun, a mysterious savior enters the fray, skillfully eliminating all enemies, including the threatening tank. Revealing himself, their unexpected rescuer turns out to be Booker, an old friend of Barney's. Booker informs Barney of a nearby village that's resisting Villain's tyranny. Barney should seek their aid, he suggests. A short time later, Lee returns, his vehicle brimming with guns. They make their way to the Bulgarian village, but the Expendables are met with resistance. They manage to convince the villagers, all women, of their intentions to defeat the Sangs, not help them. Meanwhile, Villain and Hector successfully excavate a cache of plutonium and prepare it for transport. Upon the return of the Sangs for more slaves, the Expendables spring into action. Disguised as a pastor, Lee confuses and attacks the Sangs, using some impressive moves to take down the enemies. Maggie, Barney and Gunner join the fight, taking down the remaining enemies. With the village secured, the team braces themselves for the final confrontation with Villain and his main force. Armed with the intel about Villain's location, the Expendables scout out the perimeter and notice a heavy presence of men and weapons. They get in their plane and fly towards the mine. Simultaneously the slave workers are ordered to one spot and are about to all be killed. Barney blows up a bridge full of men trying to stop him. He then deliberately crashes his plane into the mine. After a pretty rough landing the plane comes to a halt. The Expendables then save the enslaved miners from execution, but Villain and Hector escape with the plutonium. Villain remotely detonates explosive charges planted throughout the mine. The structure begins collapsing and everyone makes a run for it but to no avail as it traps Barney, the Expendables, and the villagers deep underground. After trying to escape and fail, they know there is no way out and limited oxygen. Out of nowhere a hole is drilled into the wall and a machine comes out. Trench pops his head out and Barney is over the moon. The villagers are reunited with each other and they thank Barney. Church turns out to be on the scene as well and they all join forces to deal with Villain and the Sangs. The group intercepts their enemy and his men at a nearby airport as the arms dealer prepares to leave. Booker rejoins Barney's team and they all engage the Sang forces in combat. This causes the villain's truck to come to a stop inside the airport and the plutonium to fall out of his vehicle. The mercenaries step out of the trucks, and they want to buy time for at least two trucks of plutonium to make it out of the country. Everyone at the airport runs for their lives as the armed militia walks around. Barney, Trench and Church open fire on the assailants and pick them off one at a time. Booker saves their ass from getting ambushed and they push forward killing anything that flinches in their sight. As the rest of the team joins the fray and the massacre, Villain is seen escaping. Barney goes after him as we see rapid fire being shot by both Booker and Trench, finishing off their attackers. Simultaneously as plutonium is being loaded on the plane, Villain tells them to start the engines. Church manages to hijack a car and take inspiration from every action movie as they drive and kill more men. Like seriously at this point, they have killed an entire army and they are still going at it. As the remainder of enemies boards a chopper to escape, Lee finds them there. After taking out the men around him he goes head to head with the man that helped kill Billy. With bloody revenge on his mind he dodges Hector's attacks and finally gets the upper hand and brutally finishes him off. Barney is still in the fray looking for Villain. he enters the last room only to get shot at. As he returns fire he takes cover only for the shooting to stop. Villain claims he's out of bullets and walks towards Barney. He asks if he wants to kill him like a man or a sheep and Barney accepts the challenge and drops his guns. He death stares Villain, and they begin a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Barney starts off the fight winning, but a kick from Villain changes the tables. Barney gets back up and pins Villain on the wall and just throws him around giving him a beating. His attacker then ties a chain around him and throws him to a lower level. Villain then picks up the same knife that killed Billy and Barney grabs a chain as his weapon. Barney then absolutely belts his attacker and puts him to the ground. He wraps the chain around him and finished him off almost in the same way that Billy died. The mission is a big fat success and Church thanks Barney and his team for their assistance and tells him that they're even. Barney says goodbye to Maggie and tells her that she is a solid fighter, but a bit immature. Booker also seems to have joined Church and the CIA, and Church decides to give the Expendables an old biplane to replace their crashed one. As they depart, the Expendables leave in their new plane. They remind themselves of the good times they had with Billy along the way. In France, Sophia discovers a box on her doorstep. She opens it to discover a large amount of cash in Billy's letter for her. The third film opens with a high-stakes prison transfer in motion. Barney and his team of mercenaries, the Expendables, orchestrate an audacious rescue operation. They affix a metal line between two towers and swoop in alongside the moving train on a helicopter. As they shoot down their enemies, they are targeted by a turret, 
They use the metal line to eliminate enemies on the train's roof, creating an opening for team members Lee, Toll, and Gunner to infiltrate the train. Once inside, they carve their way through the guards to locate and liberate their target, Dr. Death. Known as a knife specialist in the team's medic, Doc is a crucial asset. Upon his release, Doc springs into action. He single-handedly dispatches two guards before rushing into the control room. Seizing control of the train, Doc speeds it up, repurposes the turret to rain fire on the prison, and eradicates all enemies in sight. As the train barrels towards the prison, Doc jumps on the team's helicopter. In his wake the train crashes through the building, reducing it to dust and signifying a resounding start to the Expendables' latest mission. Later, Barney enlists Dr. Death to help intercept a shipment of bombs meant for a Somali warlord. Aboard the plane, Barney assures Lee of Dr. Death's invaluable role he plays as part of the Expendables. Dr. Death steps forward just as Barney reveals the mission's true objective, to stop arms dealer Victor Minns from delivering a shipment of devastating thermobaric bombs. The Expendables, now reunited with Caesar, get directed to the drop point in Somalia. The hunt for the ship's leader begins, with the Expendables systematically eliminating the guards. Unexpectedly, Barney discovers that the arms dealer behind the bomb supply is none other than Conrad Stonebanks, a rogue former co-founder of the Expendables, believed to have been dead. A fierce firefight ensues, with Barney and his team killing all of Stonebanks' men. However, Stonebanks proves to be a formidable foe. He shoots Caesar twice before releasing a glide bomb from his helicopter. With no other option, the Expendables are forced to retreat, with Caesar sustaining critical injuries. Back in the United States, Barney and the Expendables visit the critically injured Caesar in the hospital. Barney leaves a ring by Caesar's bedside, clearly pissed off. As he steps out of the room, Trench approaches him, advising him to steer clear of their dangerous line of work. However, Barney staunchly refuses. Upon exiting the hospital, Barney is greeted by CIA operative Max Drummer, the new mission manager for the Expendables. Drummer introduces himself and informs Barney that their former contact, Church, is no longer in the picture. Barney divulges that Church had identified their target as Victor Min, revealing that Victor Min is, in fact, Stonebanks. Unfazed by this revelation, Drummer asserts that the target's identity matters little to him. His primary concern is apprehending Stonebanks. Drummer then presents Barney with a new mission, to capture Stonebanks and deliver him to the International Criminal Court, where he will face charges for war crimes. Overwhelmed by guilt, Barney holds a discussion with the Expendables. Regrettably, he tells them they're not the future but relics of the past. Barney asserts that he can't bear the thought of endangering them further and disbands the group. Despite protests, he says the Expendables are no more. Later, Barney travels to Las Vegas to meet Bonaparte, a retired mercenary turned recruiter. Bonaparte assists Barney in assembling a new, younger team of mercenaries. Together, they traverse various locations to meet prospective recruits. First, they encounter Thorn, a computer whiz, and Luna, a nightclub bouncer. In Arizona, they cross paths with Galgo, a sharpshooter who unfortunately falsifies his credentials, leading to Barney's refusal. At Edwards Air Force Base in California, they meet Mars, an expert in weaponry. Finally, in Mexico, they meet former U.S. Marine John Smiley. After winning a wrestling match, he expresses his interest in his acceptance to join Barney's newly formed crew. In a surprising encounter, Drummer catches Barney off guard in his car. Barney jumps straight to business, asking about Stonebank's whereabouts. Drummer reveals he is in Bucharest, engaging in shady dealings with an Albanian mobster. Barney has a window of only 36 hours to apprehend Stonebanks before he goes off the grid. Drummer provides Barney with a satellite map and the coordinates of a local safe house. The following day, tensions escalate when the former Expendables confront the newly recruited team. Mars manages to defuse the situation, reminding everyone it's merely a job. Despite the hostility, Lee instructs the veteran Expendables to back off. However, John, one of the new recruits, goads the older team, calling them has -beens. Lee unexpectedly throws a knife towards Mars, who narrowly dodges it. Ending the standoff, Lee advises him to keep the knife. Barney and the fresh team kickstart their mission. On their flight, John, eager to understand the reason behind capturing Stonebanks, pesters Barney for answers. After some reluctance, Barney hands over the file on Stonebanks, providing the necessary insight to John. Meanwhile, the original Expendables team members are left to their own devices, with Caesar still in recovery. Upon landing, Barney and the new recruits take positions in an office building where Stonebanks is reportedly staying. As Barney signals the recruits, they create a diversion to see which members of his security are holding guns. A strategic meeting ensues, during which they plan their approach to capture Stonebanks. Thorne proposes a detailed plan which involves hacking into the security grid's central server, bypassing the motion detector lasers and biometric sensors, and overriding the surveillance video and CCTV systems to grant them access. 
With Barney's approval, they commence their risky mission. In the darkness of the night, Barney and the new team break into the office building, hack the servers, and neutralize several guards along the way. Thorne updates Barney about the buyer's arrival, and they continue to take down the guards while Stonebanks negotiates with Gore and Vada. Following Barney's orders, the team simultaneously shoots down everyone involved in the deal, including the buyer. Luna successfully captures Stonebanks, who is still alive. As they transport their convict, Stonebanks is revealed as a co-founder of the Expendables alongside Barney. However, he turned rogue, unsatisfied with the missions they were taking on, choosing instead to increase his wealth through illicit activities. Stonebanks baits Barney, challenging him to kill him, knowing full well that Barney won't cross that line. In the midst of their tense standoff, Stonebanks' henchmen descend from a helicopter, launching a grenade at the van. The powerful explosion sends the vehicle crashing, ejecting everyone on board. Barney, despite the chaos, attempts to get to his gun to take out Stonebanks, but before he can take aim, another grenade explodes, catapulting him off the bridge and into the ravine below. As Stonebanks' thugs prepare to execute the rest of Barney's new team, Stonebanks intervenes, ordering his men to keep them alive. The following morning, Barney wakes up to find Stonebanks' recovery team looming over him. Swiftly, he takes them all down. Reuniting with Trench, he's shown a video sent by Stonebanks, in which Thorn, Mars, Luna, and Smiley appear as hostages. Stonebanks taunts Barney, giving him a 48-hour ultimatum to rescue his new recruits or face their deaths. While formulating his rescue mission, he is surprisingly found by Galgo, who somehow tracked him down. Barney reluctantly allows Galgo to join the mission. As they prepare to depart, he sees his old team Lee, Toll, Doc Death, and Gunner approaching. They're the only ones audacious enough to follow him into such dangerous circumstances. With no other options, Barney allows his original team to rejoin the mission. As they arrive at the area, Barney and the team manage to pinpoint the exact location where Stonebanks is keeping the young recruits captive. Upon reaching their destination, they find an abandoned eight-story building, oddly void of any apparent guards. Venturing up through the levels, they encounter no resistance, deepening their suspicions. They finally find the young recruits and manage a swift rescue. However, Stonebanks laughs as the entire building is rigged with explosives set to detonate in just 45 seconds. Swiftly, Thorn employs his hacking skills and manages to delay the countdown using a jamming device, buying them about 30 minutes. Stonebanks, taken aback by the delay, commands the Asmanistan army to launch a full-force attack on the building, deploying tanks and attack helicopters. As enemy forces surge into the building from all directions, the Expendables use their elevated position to their advantage, picking off the attackers one by one. The battle intensifies as they scramble to escape the impending explosion. In the thick of the fight, Drummer and Trench come to their aid in a helicopter, accompanied by Yin Yang, another returning member of the Expendables. The team, both new and old members, work in tandem to take down Stonebank's armed men. Drummer successfully neutralizes Stonebank's helicopter, while Gunner and Smiley commandeer the enemy tank to dispatch the remaining adversaries. Inside the building, Doc Death and Lee engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy forces. Upon spotting a second wave of enemies approaching, Smiley quickly alerts Barney. Without skipping a beat, Barney radios Drummer about the incoming reinforcements. Realizing the direness of their situation, Drummer lands the helicopter atop the building, preparing to evacuate the team. Barney orders everyone to make a quick dash to the rooftop. As the team races to the safety of Drummer's chopper, Stonebanks intercepts Barney, shooting him down. Barney is grievously injured, and Stonebanks seizes the opportunity to challenge him to a final showdown. Meanwhile, Drummer tries frantically to contact Barney, who is the only one yet to board the helicopter. He receives no response. Stonebanks orders Barney to shed his armor, wanting him to truly feel the pain of the bullet wound. Although severely injured, Barney puts up a fierce fight against Stonebanks, refusing to heed Lee's pleas to retreat to the helicopter. In the meantime, Smiley urgently shouts out that the battery for Thorne's jammer device is down to just 1%. Despite this alarming situation, Barney remains engaged in his grueling combat with Stonebanks. Both scramble to reach their guns but Barney gets the shot. Stonebanks tries one last time to goad Barney about delivering him to the International Criminal Court, but Barney responds by shooting him dead. As Thorne's device finally depletes its battery, and the bomb countdown reaches zero, Barney races for his life, the building exploding behind him. As Barney reaches the rooftop, the rest of his team watches in horror as the building crumbles in a massive explosion. They fear the worst, believing that Barney has been caught in the blast. But as the smoke clears and the helicopter moves away, they spot Barney holding onto a rope tethered to the helicopter, revealing that he has narrowly escaped the deadly explosion. With Caesar's full recovery, a sense of normalcy returns to the group. 
the four new recruits are formally inducted into the Expendables. They celebrate the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. Lee and Doc challenge each other to a knife-throwing contest. They both manage to hit the bullseye, but Doc's knife slips off, granting Lee the win. The new recruits take to the stage as Barney watches them. He can't help but express a sense of pride. Watching this, Lee teases him, calling him a proud, demented father. The Expendables 4 kicks off in Libya at Gaddafi's old chemical plant. A group of soldiers are armed and outside awaiting a general who is with his family. Out of nowhere, a soldier spots one of his own dead and bang. An attack chopper comes flying in blowing people to pieces as armored trucks enter the facility and join the attack. An opposing tank fires a shot, but all this does is get the attention of the chopper who renders the vehicle useless. A man named Ramit then walks towards the tank and asks the dying man where the general is before he kills him. He gets off the tank as one of his men skillfully takes out multiple men. He then gets infrared visualization inside the building of the general. He disguises himself as his enemy and takes out the first guard. He takes care of two more with great ease and throws his blade at the general. He greets him and the scene cuts to our main man Barney. He is in New Orleans and knocks on a door with some screaming inside. He opens it to Lee having an argument with a new member by the name of Gina. She swears at them both for a bit before walking off. The two head to a local bar where Barney lost his ring in a bet and wants it back. The security guard, which is literally one of the world's strongest men named Eddie Hall, tells him to back off. I mean I'd listen to him but Lee grabs some busters off Barney and goes to the man he lost the bet to by the name Jumbo. He refuses to sell the ring back, and Barney complains about his back, and that leaves the option of fighting. But wow does Lee take out his adversaries, with the exception of the giant. Barney however, sorts him out by flipping him into some bottles, he grabs his ring and takes off. Now it's time to meet up with the crew and get combat ready. Gunner has a new look on him and here comes the new recruits. The first newbie is Easy Day followed by Galan. A man working for the CIA then walks in and introduces himself as Marsh. He has an urgent mission in relation to an arms dealer with his own army that has been hired by someone named Ocelot to steal some detonators for nuclear missiles. Their mission is to go to Libya and make sure those detonators stay there. With that the team jumps into their plane and shoots off into the sky. After some time Lee tells Barney that he's having some anxiety issues from the stress of this job. And Barney pretty much laughs at him. In Libya, the general's son has a gun aimed to his head, and he tells his captors the nuclear detonators is in the control room, and tells them the code to the safe. But this does not stop the bullet from ending his son's life. Back at the plane, when they enter Libya, they are shot at by militants on the ground. But Barney still manages to land on the runway as his men roll off in vehicles to which he immediately takes off and uses countermeasures to get to safety. The crew make their way to the facility as Ramit finishes packing up the nuclear detonators. He leaves the facility, and Gunner takes a shot at him but misses. He puts his glasses on and misses once again. Ramit is driving away at this point, but the Expendables are right behind, exactly four enemy vehicles in between them. They start shooting but Lee does so as well. Gunner finally finds his shot taking out another vehicle as the remainder split up. They also do the same and Lee loses his gun attached to the car. So instead, he throws a knife at the enemy turret before pulling up beside him and jumping onto their vehicle and killing the driver. He also takes out the man at the back as Galan jumps into the driver's seat of the enemy vehicle and Lee back to his own. Meanwhile, Easy Day takes out a vehicle in front of him as another one pulls beside him. The enemy militant jumps onto Easy Day's vehicle, but this proves to be fatal for the assailant. Toll Road pulls up next to the third vehicle and throws a grenade in it. As they pull out of the factory, they are flipped over. Easy Day then puts a bullet into the opposing driver. Lee pulls up beside Ramit and his bullets can't penetrate the glass. At the same time, Barney's plane runs out of flares and is shot. But as the plane is still in the air, he tells Lee to get the detonators but Lee disobeys orders and diverts to blow up the enemy missile launcher instead. But this doesn't save Barney, as Ramit uses a massive sniper rifle to shoot the plane. He boards his chopper and takes off as the plane crashes into the ground with a massive explosion. Lee runs to the wreckage and so does his team. They see a dead corpse, unrecognizable, but wearing the Expendables ring. The scene sadly cuts to a memorial for their friend Barney. Lee is not happy one bit, and Toll Road tells the other Expendables that this life is not an easy one. Agent Marsh makes his way towards Lee and tells him he's not going back on the mission. The rest of the team agree and tell Lee because he betrayed Barney's direct order, his sacrifice was worthless. Lee stands up with no support from the lot of them and takes Barney's ring before walking out. A couple days go by and he makes his way to Gina's house to learn of a declassified file as the result of Barney's death that may lead to finding Ocelot. Come morning, Lee checks his phone and turns out he's put a tracker on a blade he gifted to Gina. 
on board with them is another recruit by the name of Lash, they make their way to the South Asian Sea in a CIA black site. In the meantime, Lee is in Thailand, he makes his way towards a boat that has the Expendables logo on it. He then asks a cleaner he's looking for a man named Dekka. The cleaner says he doesn't know, and so Lee jumps on the boat but the cleaner isn't too happy about that and attacks him. He immediately stops after spotting Barney's ring, and Lee explains the situation, and the man introduces himself as Dekka. At the CIA black site, the team gets strapped and ready as Marsh walks in and tells them that Ramit has hijacked a ship and is headed towards Russia. There will be a trade being conducted on that boat, and he tells them that Ocelot will also be at the scene. He finishes it off by saying he's tagging along due to their stuff up in Libya. With that, they board the plane and take off. Once they arrive, they begin dropping out of the plane and deploy parachutes. Their accuracy is astounding as they land directly on the enemy vessel. The group splits up with one going to the right and one to the left. The ship is extraordinarily quiet, and Toll says something's not right. Gina and her team break into the control room with no one in sight. Toll's team does the same, but the lights suddenly go dark and men pop up with guns aimed at them. They end up locked in a room together where they all immediately say there is a snitch amongst them. They all play the blame game, and then the room gets opened. Bach enters with armored guards and asks who their leader is. When Marsh says it's him, he smacks him to sleep and leaves. And now, the man they kicked out of the team is their only hope. Along with Dekka, they approach the enemy captured vessel. When Lee tells his comrade to get strapped up, he refuses, saying that if he goes back to his old ways of killing, he'll never close that door again. With that, Barney shoots a grappling gun and climbs his way to the deck. There, he notices there's no sight of a fight, and realizes the Expendables have been captured. Out of nowhere, he is held at gunpoint, but he distracts the man long enough to take him out. Marsh is escorted to the deck and spots Russo on the feed. He gets smacked once again and Ramit demands a prisoner exchange, she is left with no option but to accept the trade. Meanwhile, Lee quietly navigates his way through the ship making sure not to be spotted by the enemy. He makes his way below deck and hears noise from a room. He makes his way there and kills multiple assailants at once. He continues by grabbing one of the enemies and forcing him to reveal the location of his friends. Ramit then gets word there might be a rat on board and calls on his dead man. But Lee answers instead and tells Ramit he made a mistake by letting him breathe air. But that will not happen again. He runs towards his friends and kills any man he sees in his sights. He spots what seems to be a nuke and continues through the ship. Though he finds himself cornered by quite a few men and devises a plan. He throws a flash grenade and jumps on a bike that has some weapons strapped on it. He kills the lot of them and takes off only to get chased by a few. He flies through the corridors and deals with everyone in his way. On the deck he causes much more chaos and problems, and finally gets rid of one of his pursuers by causing an explosion. He has a nice western standoff with the last one, and they start driving towards each other. He uses a jet as leverage to go airborne and kill his last attacker. Then bang, he starts getting fired at by a war machine and takes cover. He gets bored of that real quick, and goes back to shooting and killing any who dares look at him. But there is too many of them, and here comes one of the deadliest mercenaries. Dekka slaughters all the enemies that had tried to hurt them, with that the two of them slice and dice until they finish their appetite. Below deck, Galan starts fantasizing how he's going to kill both Ramit and Bach. But his fantasies are quite out of the ordinary. They find a hidden trap door and Galan is the first to run through it. Meanwhile, Russo tells Ramit that Mr. Bia is en route towards him. Turns out he is the only man who knows the face of Ocelot. The deadly duo then find their friend's cell empty. The Expendables walk through the corridors and are spotted by some men. Lee points his gun at them first though, and takes them out. The group are over the moon to see him, and grab the weapons off the dead soldiers. Lee tells Toll that he needs to check out the massive bomb he saw. Turns out the warhead is live and is set to go off in 27 minutes. And with ship being a stolen vessel that's headed for Russia, it seems like it might start World War III if it goes off. They go to find the kill switch, and so Easy Day puts on some music and causes a decoy to go off on deck which lures the baddies. When they get close bam, they're all dead. The Expendables reveal themselves with Lee leading the charge to Ramit. Lash has some fun, followed by Easy Day, Gunner, Toll Road and Gina. The whole team just walks through untouched. Lee actually gets bored of using his assault rifle and simply uses his pistol instead. Galan makes his way up the stairs and takes out two goons. Unfortunately, Toll is stabbed by Bach from behind. Dekka comes to his defense and both use knives against each other in an outstanding duel. Though Bach proves to be quite the adversary, and Lash joins the fight to tilt the favor to their side to which they finally kill their adversary. Lee finally enters the control room and uses his knife to cut down three mercenaries. He faces off with Ramit, who takes out his own weapons. Lee is not messing around and gets right into it. The two duel each other with precision and strength. They both take a fall, and Lee manages to wound Ramit who laughs at him. 
Their fight continues for some time until Lee throws an axe into Ramit. He is severely wounded and tells Lee that Ocelot has the kill switch, not him. The chopper with the prisoner exchange finally lands Lee notices Agent Marsh's toothpicks on the floor and knows that he is Ocelot. Ocelot takes out the prisoner and the two pilots. With 12 minutes to go, Lee decides to blow the getaway chopper straight into the ocean beside it. Ocelot tells Lee that the kill switch he has can prevent World War III, but he wants it to happen as it will be profitable beyond compare and the expendables will take all the blame. He throws the kill switch in the ocean and Lee runs off and says they need a plan. Decca says they can escape with his boat as Gunner and Easy Day cover an injured toll road. They all finally start making their way to the stern. With the grapple still tied up, the crew begins going down one by one until all but Lee is left. He decides to chop off the hook, and Gina just stares at him in horror knowing he is going to die. With seven minutes to go, Lee makes his way to the control room and drops the anchor. He puts the ship in full throttle and turns the helm all the way. The boat begins falling and he releases the anchor and takes the ship away from Russia. He begins getting shot at, and all the enemy mercenaries start running towards the bridge, Lee shoots at will but there are too many bullets flying his way. Out of ammo he closes the door and awaits death to come unto him. Out of nowhere the soldiers are all blown to pieces, Lee is tripping out and opens the door to find Marsh telling him let's have a fair one on one. As Lee comes down, a chopper shreds Marsh, Lee looks inside and sees Barney flying it. He jumps in the chopper and Barney fires missiles at the ship causing it to sink. He flies away, as there are only a few seconds left before detonation. Lee swears at him a bit, but then a massive explosive in the water causes it to fly kilometers away, in an amazing sight. The camaraderie between the two brothers has been restored. Later, the crew gather once more where they are all relieved to see both Barney and Lee alive. Barney explains how he put Jumbo in his spot instead so he could fake his death and get the files and classified to push Ocelot out of hiding, with that the movie ends and I do hope you enjoyed this recap so make sure to show some love and hit that subscribe button. Until the next one.